Hi, my name is Julie Athey. I'm the Director of Compliance with the Robert E. Miller Group in Kansas City, Missouri. We've been receiving a lot of questions about a class action lawsuit that has been filed against Blue Cross affiliates across the country. And I just wanted to take this opportunity to answer some of those questions and hopefully provide you some additional resources for what you may need to be doing um, in the coming months. The lawsuit alleges that Blue Cross affiliates engaged in non-competitive practices in violation of federal antitrust law. It, it, more specifically, it says that the different Blue Cross affiliates basically agreed not to compete against each other, which could have had the effect of impre increasing the cost of health insurance to consumers in the long run. So for example, in the Kansas City, Missouri area, the lawsuit would allege that uh, because Blue Cross of Kansas City doesn't compete against Blue Cross of Kansas in Johnson County, that that drove up the cost of providing health insurance or getting obtaining health insurance uh, for consumers. Now, of course, Blue Cross denies the allegations. They actually claim that their practices drove down the cost of insurance, but they've agreed to the settlement anyway and have not admitted to any wrongdoing. Late last year, the company agreed to a nearly $3 billion settlement of the lawsuit. The settlement has been preliminarily approved by the court, but it is still relatively early in the process, and um, there's much that's left to be decided and a lot that's still unknown. Another part of the, the lawsuit, in addition to the $3 billion settlement, is that um, Blue Cross has decided to change some of its practices going forward to ensure that certain employers receive competitive bids for health insurance in the future. In general, just kind of one good resource that um, I recommend everybody take a look at who's interested in this settlement is the official settlement webpage, which has been established by the claims administrator that has been approved by the court. The claims administrator is called JND Administrators, and their website is set up at bcbssettlement.com. And we're going to take a look at that in a few minutes. In particular, there is a link to a number of frequently asked questions at the top of the page of the landing page for the website. So um, anyone who has any additional questions that we aren't able to answer today uh, should take feel free to take a look at that website. So one of the first question we started receiving, actually, not just one of the questions, is that a lot of our clients are receiving an email or a letter from a company that claims to have special expertise in filing uh, claims against a class, a class action and offering to basically provide their services to companies that had Blue Cross coverage over the past decade or so. So they claim that they have some special knowledge or expertise and that they can help you file a claim in the class action lawsuit and that presumably they claim to be able to get you more money as a result of their services. We don't really recommend that you uh, work with these people. In general, filing a claim is very easy. We're gonna take a look at that in a minute. We don't know if they actually are able to increase your settlement amount or not but we don't have any reason to think that they can. The only exception would be that if you decide not to participate in the class action lawsuit, you would have the opportunity to opt out and file your own lawsuit against Blue Cross if you wanted to do that. Most clients of ours, we don't really anticipate that that would be uh, uh, the best solution or the best approach. For most of you, you aren't. Wouldn't, we wouldn't consider you to be large enough to justify basically going all out on your own to sue Blue Cross, incurring the potential expenses and expenditure of time and money um, of pursuing a separate lawsuit on your own. However, if that is something that you are interested in doing, we recommend that you talk to an attorney about doing that. So another question we have is, how do you know whether you are you have a claim in this lawsuit? So the class action is basically representative of a certain group of companies and individuals. And those are uh, called the class. The potential class for this particular lawsuit is anyone who offered health insurance coverage to their clients. If you're fully insured from February 7th of 2008 through October 16th of 2020, 
For self-insured plans, the time frame would be September 1, 2015 through October 16, 2020. So if you offered health insurance to your employees during that time frame, then you are a potential member of the class that is opted in automatically to this lawsuit. Again, if you want to opt out, then there is a process for you to do that. In addition to just knowing the basic time frame that covers the that the lawsuit covers, you will also likely be receiving uh, a notification from the class action administrators that you are a potential member of the class. Those notices are due by May 31st, 2021. So it's something that you could be potentially receiving in the near future. In addition to companies insurance through Blue Cross in the relevant timeframes, your employees also could potentially file a claim. And there is a process for them to do that as well. And we will be revisiting that uh, in a few minutes when we look at the website. Another question we've been receiving is how much money could you potentially receive if you file a claim with this um, class action? The answer to that is we have no way of knowing that. Uh, there are far too many variables at this time. Uh, one of the variables is how many people actually file a, a claim. Just like you never know what your odds are of winning the lottery until you know how many tickets have been bought, you know, we can't really say how much money you could potentially receive until we know how many people have actually filed a claim. Other variables include what were, how long did you have coverage with Blue Cross, what were the amount of premiums paid, and whether you were fully insured or self-insured. There is additional information about this on the settlement website under the FAQs. So if you wanted to take a look at that, uh, that might be helpful as well. Finally, um, the question would be, the next logical question would be, how do you actually file a claim? And the answer to that is that you can do so now um, at the settlement website. So I'm going to pull that up. Here is the bcbssettlement.com website. As you can see right here at the top, is a um, very prominent notice that you can start your claim. Now, one thing I wanted to point out about this is that it is a little bit confusing in that it combines two things in this one section. The first is filing a claim, which we'll cl click on and take a look at here in a minute. And the second is that other part of the lawsuit that I mentioned earlier that um, entitles certain types of companies to a different process to get a more competitive bid from a second Blue Cross affiliate. So this second sentence here where it says, are you one of the companies impacted by the second blue bid? Check your eligibility. That has to do with whether you get a, this, this uh, enhanced process moving forward. That check your eligibility link doesn't have anything to do with whether you are eligible to file a claim. So unfortunately, I do think this is a little bit misleading. I don't have any reason to think that that was intentional on the part of the administrators. I just think it's an unfortunate formatting problem. So don't be misled by this check your eligibility. Chances are, if you clicked on that, you're, it's gonna come up that you aren't eligible. But that again has to do with the other part of the lawsuit, not with whether you are entitled to any money. So let's go ahead and click on file a claim. And you'll see here that you can file an online claim form. Now it's asking for a unique ID, which is something that you would receive when you get the actual notice of the class action settlement from the administrators. But since you don't have that yet and they've made the claim form available in advance of those notices, they've also given you a chance to file a claim without that ID number. So if you click down here under file a claim, then you'll find where you can select that you are filing a claim on behalf of your business or on behalf of yourself. So here's one of those things that, you know, if you have employees asking you about um, their own potential claims, then you could direct them to this and they can file as an individual who had coverage during the relevant timeframes. So as a business, you can click and then you can fill out this form online. Now this won't let me go on to the next stages um, without filling out this section of the, of the form. So I'm not able to go forward to the next pages, but I'm gonna go ahead and talk about those anyway. Uh, the most important part here would be the allocation of premium section, which is section three. So under this section, allocation of premiums, you will um, be required to decide between allowing 
the lawsuit to determine how much of a total premium was paid by you versus how much was paid by your employees. They've established default allocation of premiums paid of uh, assuming that 15% of employee only coverage is paid by the employee and 85% by the employer and a default assumption that for non-employee only coverage, basically anything along the lines of family coverage or employee plus spouse or employee plus children, that in those types of levels of coverage, the employee is paying 34% and you are paying 66%. So if, those alloc if that allocation of premiums is inaccurate and you feel that it would be more to your benefit to correct it, then you ha will have an opportunity in filing your claim form to correct it. So when you file your claim, you'll have the opportunity to correct that and say, rather than uh, you know, choosing the default approach of you only paid 85% of your employees' claims, you can correct that by saying, we in fact paid 90% this year, 95% that year, whatever the case may be. Similarly, you can correct if uh, your allocation of premiums was different for uh, family coverage or employee plus spouse or those types of things. So that is pretty much the nuts and bolts of um, how to file a claim. There's so much information on this website. I can't really anticipate every possible question that you might have, but hopefully the website will be a helpful resource for you. I did want to go back to the home page and show you that up here on the top, uh, across the top, there is a section for FAQs. You click on that and you will see that there are a number of questions and answers here. Uh, these questions are pretty much anything you can anticipate at that time, although a lot of those will probably say similarly to I have that a lot of information just isn't, isn't exactly known at this time. As I said, this is a long process. We're still relatively early in the decision making as far as you know, how many claims have been filed, what your dollar amounts may eventually turn out to be. But at the Miller Group, we are keeping a close eye on the situation and we will certainly be updating our clients uh, as any new developments occur. Thanks so much and feel free to contact me anytime you have any questions.